Today we are going to start the Manhua known as Unstruck on the same day for a thousand years. The story starts where we get to know that the main character is stuck on the same day for his entire life like an endless loop. The time gets resets at the end of the day and the main character is reincarnated back to the same day. At first the main character felt lucky and he started to spend all his money like crazy as he will get back all his money back the next day. But soon he got bored and started venturing in the field of crime, gambling and things like that as he doesn't have to worry about the consequences as it will be reset the next day. He even gets irritated, so he tries to kill himself to end this loop but fails every time. But, at 7 am on July 7, 2020, when the main character turns a thousand years old, seems like he was telling his story to a beautiful girl in a nightclub over the bar counter. The girl in response questions him whether he actually made such a story and labels it as an old tactic. The main character assures her and speaks of his skills and also says that he'll wake up tomorrow again in the same loop even if he sleeps with her. The girl is a bit anxious at first as it's her first time meeting such a person and so texts her friend to help her dot the Main character says that her friend is not going to come and says that her ex-boyfriend had come back to her life and so she is going to stay with her. The cute girl says him to stop lying to which he replies to wait for the next 9 minutes and 13 seconds after which she will receive a call. Just then, a rude guy forcefully holds the girl's hand and starts to harass her. The girl tries to let her go of the rude guy's possession but fails so, the main character interferes and asks the rude guy to come over to him. The rude guy questions the main character and quickly throws his cigarette towards the main character but the main character doesn't even flinch or doge the cigarette as it was thrown beside him to just scare him off. The rude guy is a bit shocked that the main character didn't even doge the attack, quickly rushes towards him to land a punch on his face but the main character quickly doges the attack and at the same time make uppercut punch at hit jaw and bully gets thrown away in a single punch. And just then, the main boss arrives angrily stating how dare he touches men and says he'll be a dead man now. The main character asks the bully's boss how did he grow up so fast and questions that whether this is how his elder brother Zhao taught him to be. The bully's boss is completely shocked and asks him how he knows his brother. The main character on the other hand calls the bully boss's elder brother Zhao and tells him that his younger brother was doing some bad stuff in the bar. He even goes on to say that if he doesn't want to start a war in China, then he must do what the main character said in the main meeting. He ends the calls by telling Zhao to keep his people in check else there won't be a second chance as he throws the phone to the bully's boss who then instantly apologizes for his action. The main character being in a good mood says he won't bother them. The beautiful girl is now in utter disbelief and asks herself as to who this person is. Just then the girl receives a call from her friend and her friend apologizes as she cannot come to the bar as her boyfriend came back and she quickly hags up the phone. The beautiful girl is in disbelief as the main character's words come true. The main character then asks the girl to come with him and takes her to the garage pointing to a luxurious car which is not his and he steals the car in front of the girl as he knows that the time will get reset at the end of the day. The girl questions him that he won't leave her home alone to which the man goes into Sigma mode saying he's not interested into girls who use a ton of makeup to look pretty. The girl gets angry and brings out a wet wipe and uses it over her face to show the main character that she doesn't use makeup to which she is now rated 9 tenths by the main character. The main character offers her to go to her place as he can prove he is not lying and that the bed in his house is pretty big. The girl gets cautious and says that she will call the police if anything happens to her. The next day the main character wakes up saying that he woke up the same day again and that the girl is gone. Just then the girl enters from the bathroom and says, that how come the say is not repeating to which the main character is completely shocked and the girl now demands an explanation to why is it 8th of July. The scene then shifts to a car chase where Wang's men are chasing Wu Chen and the girl who are running away in Wang's red car. The goons threaten Wu Chen to stop the car or they will kill him with a gun pointing towards them. The girl is terrified but Wu Chen says it's a fun part as he speeds up in car. Wu Chen dials an unknown number from which a woman replies hello and Wu Chen refers her as Mrs. Li and informs her that there is a traitor present in her team who can make her lose the bet. Mrs. Li is shocked and asks Wu Chen about how he knows about the bet to which Wu Chen replies that he has his own sources. 
Wu Chen says that he can also tell more about her brother but for that she has to send someone to meet him downstairs in her office within half an hour so that they can talk in person with her. Mrs. Li is curious and demands to who is she speaking to but Wu Chen is caught up in the chase being pinned down by both the cars on his side. Wu Chen makes a clean drift which amazes the goons chasing him and they are in awe of his driving skills. Wu Chen quickly makes an escape and arrives at the girl's house. The girl tell Wu Chen that she won't be asking him how he knows her house address as he will repeat his old crappy story but before leaving, she compliments his driving skills wants to know from where did he learn it from. Wu Chen being Wu Chen, replies that he practiced it through his multiple lives as he also died a lot of times while learning such driving skills and cautions her not to try it out as she only has one life unlike him. The girl is now irritated and asks him to stop lying and not expect her to call him even if he has her number now. Wu Chen drives away from the girl and the girl thinks that the night was probably arranged by her friend as Wu Chen wouldn't be knowing where she lived. She feels confident and thinks she won't let Wu Chen escape from her hands. Half an hour later we are shown a girl named Li Ruobing who is a star entrepreneur in the Donghai city but her background is very complicated as she is the sister of Wang Zhuang Yuan who can easily destroy the whole of East China and because Li Ruobing is very beautiful, Wu Chen had a deep relationship with her during his lifetime. Wu Chen then arrives in Li Ruobing's office room and she asks the guard to leave and starts to read Wu Chen's entire life summary of his education his mother and about her sister Wu Zhao who goes to a high school. Wu Chen compliments her on finding so much information about him from just his phone number. Li while tearing his information mentions that he looks like an ordinary person and an ordinary person cannot know about the bet and demands to know who Wu Chen really is. Wu Chen replies that he isn't any ordinary and that he knows a lot of things that she cares about such as the traitor who has been lurking around her. He demands $10 million to reveal the identity of the traitor making it a fair deal between them. Li Ruobing questions whether she should make a deal with a person who came out of nowhere and a person can be trusted while she quickly pulls out her gun from her drawer and points it at his head. She demands him to explain everything or she won't let him get out alive. Wu Chen replies that he knows that she will surely shoot him but then he tosses the bullet cartilage from the gun magazine in his hand. Li Ruobing is completely shocked when she sees her gun's magazine in Wu Chen's hand and wonders how he removed the magazine from her gun as it was under her table. She guesses that it was when he leaned in front of her when he came into her office. Wu Chen says that he is an intelligent businessman and it's just using his intelligence that he removed her gun's magazine. He then asks her to trust his ability to gather information and that he doesn't mean any harm to her but rather wants to earn some money. Wu Chen thinks that the only way he can let Li Ruobing lower her guard is to go around playing the card of earning money for information and soon he will be able to achieve Li Ruobing. Li Ruobing asks Wu Chen what more does he know and Wu Chen starts with her entire biography that she is the eldest daughter of the Li family but because she was treated differently as a girl. She wanted to fight and prove everyone that she can be stronger than men but still she could not escape her brother's shadow. Her mother always helped her but after their parents' divorce, she started to date other men and became a pain so, she is being forced to marry Ding Rulong. She wanted to run away from getting married, but she couldn't as she worried about her mother. So, she tried to get Ding Rulong die from her three fake boyfriends, but they all ended up failing. Her first fake boyfriend committed suicide, second one sent to a mental hospital and the third was framed and imprisoned. All this was done by Ding Rulong as he is a careful person and wants to make sure that no other man ever comes close to her. In order to escape the fate of marriage, she made a secret bet with Ding Rulong as to whoever has a bigger business after 5 years wins the bet. What she doesn't know is that Ding Rulong took someone from her side and made him to spy on her and on the launch day, that spy will ruin everything for her. Finally, after speaking so much, Wu Chen decides to stop. And at that very moment, Li Ruobing brings out her check book and writes a check of $10 million and signs it. Giving the check to Wu Chen she asks him to reveal the traitor and he calmly says he will surely tell her. A person named Feng Yan who is the senior assistant comes knocks to enter the office who requires Miss Li's signature on some documents. Wu Chen grabs the assistant's head and slams it onto her desk pointing a gun at his head saying that he is the traitor and questions the assistant what the $5 million in his Swiss bank account are for. 
The assistant completely denies of knowing anything saying they are mistaken. Wu Chen pissed off, takes his phone and dials to Ding Rulong from the assistant's phone and Ding from the other side asks whether he got the information which proved Wu Chen's point. Li Ruobing tells the assistant that he had made a lot of money over the years in every shady manner possible. But she turned her black eye as he has been working for her since a long time and she didn't think that he would sell her out for just five million dollars. The assistant accepts his mistake kneeling on the floor and starts to speak something. Wu Chen at the same moment interrupts him and says her not to believe his words as he will try to speak of her mother as it is her weak point which Ding Rulong has told the assistant. Li Ruobing is taken aback and tells the assistant to go away as she never wants to see him again. Wu Chen says that he thought she would kill the assistant, but Li Ruobing says that she didn't want to do it herself, but the assistant will be dead by the end of the day. She says that she is still suspicious of Wu Chen's identity as he can be sent by Ding Rulong and the assistant was just a mere pawn to win over her trust. Wu Chen tells her that if she is still so suspicious of him, then he has a way to prove his innocence and all she has to do is to let him be her fake boyfriend. Wu Chen speaks to Li Ruobing about how concerned Ding Rulong is about his reputation and will not still back quiet if Li starts going out with him. So, by becoming her boyfriend is the best way he can prove his innocence. Li Ruobing tells him that she had three boyfriends in the past and all three got screwed up by Ding Rulong. Wu Chen knows that and says that if people want to climb higher, then having a relationship in life will make it very interesting. Li pointing a gun at his forehead admits that he is very special. He is courageous and bold but he is very young and it would be a pity as he could die and asks him isn't he afraid of this. Wu Chen says that if she really wanted to kill someone, she would have called someone in by that time and that there is nothing to be afraid of. Li Ruobing is impressed by Wu Chen and says that couples should have an intimate photo and goes on to click photos with Wu Chen. With this she can confirm Wu Chen's identity by sending a photo of them as a couple to Ding Rulong and at the same time also irritate and offend Ding Rulong. From that day onwards, Wu Chen is her boyfriend and she asks him to become her personal assistant and that she will get someone to fill the position later and wants to know what happened to her brother. Wu Chen tells that the top three clubs of China run by her brother, the East China Sea Crown, the Central China Regal and the South China Sea Plaza which everyone knows. But the East China Sea Crown has done something beyond their boundary which involves many top celebrities, rich people and officials and an investigation has begun three months ago in this matter. Wu Chen mentions that according to what he knows is that their network will be closed in another month at the most. Li Ruobing is shocked, and Wu Chen tells that it is not only her brother's problem but also troublesome for the entire Li family. Once the investigation is done, her brother will not only be sent to prison, but the Li family can abandon her brother. Li Ruobing tries to confirm it in a serious manner and asks for a surety regarding the information. The scene then shifts to the East China Sea Crown Entertainment Club where the goons are explaining of what happened during the car chase. Wang Zhuang Yuan who is Li Ruotai's right-hand man, is furious that a person had stolen their car, injured their man and even used their Li surname and questions whether the person wishes to live any longer or not. Zhao Guzai, Li Ruotai's left-hand man says that it's strange that someone would have his phone number and know about the May rally. Whereas Li Ruotai, the eldest grandson of the Li family wants to meet the person himself so that he can kill that person with his own bare hands. Just then Li Ruobing enters the room and everyone is startled by her sudden appearance. Her brother Li Ruotai tells his subordinates to put out the sum urgently as he fears and respects his sister very much and asks Li Ruobing whether there is any urgent matter as she came in person to meet him. Li Ruobing says that she has to introduce someone to him. Wu Chen then says that he borrowed his car yesterday to play and so he tosses over the car keys to him and says that the car in the underground parking has a lot of fantasy fashion. Just then the goon who chased Wu Chen yesterday shouts that this is the same person who used the Li surname yesterday. We can see that Ruotai who the eldest grandson of the Li family is actually the most favored and is able to use most of the family's power so, compared to Li Ruobing, he is really strong and his strength is also not weaker than Ding Rulong. Li Ruobing on the other hand grew up tough since she was a child as she spared no effort whether it was to protect her brother or to beat him up which also led Li Ruotai to respect and fear his sister. 
Ruo Tai was just going to speak about Wu Chen but Li Ruobing immediately pulled his ears and said him that Wu Chen is his brother-in-law. Everyone was shocked at this revelation, but Li Ruo Tai didn't believe it as she could be playing the fake boyfriend trick again and felt that Wu Chen is also an ordinary person. He asks her of a reason to be with Wu Chen. Li Ruobing starts acting up and says that she is not feeling well lately and leans on Wu Chen's chest and says Wu Chen that it's all his fault. Wu Chen asks her that, isn't she going too far with her drama and says that he isn't afraid of Ding Rulong. But, Li Ruobing's brother is completely stunned seeing Wu Chen and her sister so close to each other like a couple.